All right, hello, math fans. All right, today we're going to talk about chapter three, and this is actually kind of the cornerstone of algebra. It's solving equations, okay? You, this is the key, really, to a lot of the chapters, to be able to solve an equation. And so we're going to start with uh, some basic ones here. And again, I know for a lot of you guys this review, but for some of you, maybe this is the first time you've seen it, so we'll uh, give it a shot here. So these are called one-step problems. Okay, so what you do is, well, let's start out with a real basic one. If I have x plus 3 is equal to 8, basically what we're saying is what plus 3 is equal to 8? And most of you guys are like, well, that's pretty easy. You just say x equals 5, and that's great. But what I'm going to work on with you guys is I'm going to work on you guys showing your work. And I know some of you guys are just like, oh, man, I don't want to show my work. It's too hard. But you know what? If you show your work now, um, then when the problems get more difficult, you'll be used to it and uh, life will be a lot better. I guarantee you. Because I've had it in the past where kids don't show their work and they do well for some of the problems and all of a sudden they get to the harder ones and they have no idea how to show their work and they do really poorly. Okay, So you have to know how to show your work. And basically when I grade a quiz, I'm going to look for your work. If you just have an answer, you'll get half credit. You'll get a 50%, which is an F. Okay, I will. I demand that you guys show me all your work and then come up with the correct answer. Okay, so this is what I want to see from you guys, and I know you guys have learned different things, uh, different ways to solve things, but I want to see all your work underneath the problem. Okay, uh, I don't want to see any work like you know on the side or up on top or anything. I want to see everything underneath. So this is the deal. You have x plus three equals eight, and you always do the opposite. So this is a key word for always. Uh, for solving these equations. Okay, you always do the opposite. So basically you're adding 3 here, so you do the opposite and you subtract 3. And this is the work I want to see, minus 3, minus 3. I want to see it on both sides. I don't want to see a big minus 3, I want to see a minus 3 here. So that cancels and I want to see an 8 minus 3, so that gives you a 5. And then that's your answer, x equals 5. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. It's not going to be a lot of work, but that's going to give you full credit. Alright, so let's just do another one here. Um, x minus 6 equals um, 11. All right, so again, you do opposite. That's key. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. And you get x equals 17. I mean, you can cross this out if you want, but you know that's going to cancel. And you get your answer, x equals 17. Okay, that's pretty mellow. Um, sometimes you'll see problems that look like this. Um, 8 equals x minus 6. Now, personally, what I would do if I were you is I would bring the variable to the, uh, the left-hand side. So I would actually rewrite this as x minus 6 equals 8. We haven't changed the problem at all. Okay, We haven't changed it one bit. It's still 8 equals x minus 6, except now we're saying x minus 6 equals 8. Okay, and then you just solve the problem like normal. Okay, it's, it's really easy. So basically what you're, you're solving here, the variable is on the left side. And that's equal to a number, which is on the right side. This is what I want to see when you're doing these problems. All right, so we're going to add 6 to both sides. We get x equals 14. If you would have done it this way, Let's say you had 8 equals x minus 6. You could have solved it from there and said plus 6 plus 6 and get 14 equals x. But this is not what I want to see. In fact, I will take a point off. If you leave it as 14 equals x, I'll take a point off because what if I say, well, what's x? And you're like, well, it's 14. I'm like, well, no, it says 14 is equal to x. So is 14 equal to 5? I mean, what is x? This is not really the correct way to have it. This is what I want to see, x equals 14. All right, very important. Okay, and you can even add negative numbers in there too. What happens if I, you know, x plus 8 equals negative 7? You know, that's pretty easy. Subtract 8, and you get x equals negative 15. So you've got to be really good with your variables. All right, try another one here. Uh, negative 3 equals x plus 2. I'm going to flip around. x plus 2 equals negative 3, and then subtract 2. So x equals negative negative 5. Okay? 
That's a one step with adding and subtracting. Um, let's do uh, some problems with um, multiplication and division. Okay, so if I have 4x equals um, 12. All right, so again, remember I said you always do the opposite. And right in between here, this is 4 times x. So what's the opposite of multiplication? It's division. And remember what I told you back in the day, division is the same thing as a fraction. So I'm going to draw a line underneath each of these. Notice the work I'm doing. This is what I want to see. I draw a line underneath each one of those, and then that cancels, and I get x equals 3. 12 over 4 is 3. Okay? It's pretty easy. Um, if I said 15 equals 3x, okay, again, I would flip it around and say 3x equals 15. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 5. All right? That's pretty easy. Um, so let's get into um, a couple problems where you have, let's do a negative, because those are always confusing for people. Negative x equals 7. Okay, this is the work that I want to see you guys do. Okay, I want you to divide both sides. Now, remember, a negative x is the same thing as negative 1x. Okay, even though we don't write negative 1, because I told you I didn't want that in the final answer, if that helps you to actually solve the problem, go ahead and write negative 1 there. So then you, when you divide, you divide by negative 1. Because that's truly what you're doing. You're not, sometimes people see this, and they go and divide by a negative. Well, that doesn't make sense. What Negative what? You can't just divide by a negative. All right? Ooh, he looks like a pretty sad guy. Oh, okay. So don't do that. That's a bad thing to do. Um, you want to divide by negative 1. So that cancels, and we get x equals, and again, don't leave it like this. If you can reduce it, it's equal to negative 7. All right? So what about this one? Uh, negative 8 equals negative x. Well, I'm going to move it around. I'm going to say negative x equals negative 8. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And I get x equals positive 8. Okay? That's not too bad. All right, what about, um, what about if you get x over 3 equals 4? Well, that's division. And how do you get rid of division? The opposite of division is multiplication. Okay, so you're going to multiply by 3 over 1. Okay, basically, if you think about it, this is like saying 1x over 3. Even though, again, we don't use 1x, but for solving it, sometimes it helps. So you, you do the reciprocal of 1 third equals 3 over 1, or 3. Okay, so I multiply that by 3 over 1, and I could multiply this by 3 over 1, but... I don't need to multiply by over 1 because it's a whole number. If this was a fraction, then you'd have to say 3 over 1 to help you multiply it out. But it's not. So I'm just going to say 3. Well, those cancel. Remember, they cross cancel. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 3 once. And you get x equals 4 times 3 is 12. Now, all these problems that I'm doing, math fans, it's so easy to check them. Okay, You just plug the number back into the original problem and see if it works. So in other words, my original problem was x over 3 equals 4. Let's put a 12 into where x is to see if it works. What's 12 over 3? Or 12 divided by 3? It's 4. So that, that checks out. All right? So make sure, you know, if you got time at the end of a test or quiz, check it out. Why turn it in and get make a mistake when you know you can check it? All right, so let's try another one here. Um, 8 equals x over negative Three. Okay, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 3 over 1, or negative 3. x equals negative 24. Notice I wrote the x on the left-hand side. I switched it around. Okay? Um, so let's try a couple of them that have um, a little bit, little bit nastier of a fraction. Okay, what about um, x plus... 2 thirds equals 1 half. Well, okay, you got to do a little work now. You've got to subtract 2 thirds from both sides. Well, you can't subtract it, so what do you do? Well, it's just kind of like our old problem 1 half minus 2 thirds. We have to get our common denominator. Common denominator is 6. 
So we multiply this one by uh, 3, right? And then 3 over 3. And this one by 2 over 2. So we get uh, 3 over 6 minus 4 over 6, which is negative 1 over 6. So all that work, just to get our final answer, x equals negative 1 over 6. Okay, so you know sometimes you might have a, a just a, a fraction that you got to deal with, and um, you know not a big deal. All right, so let's do um, do a few more problems here. You notice how I always wrote x over two equals three, and then you multiply both sides by two over one, and then by two, and you get x, x equals six. Well, I can also write it this way: one half x equals three. Okay, now it's a little bit different. You know how here it was division and then you do the opposite and you get multiplication? Well, if I have one half x, um, and it's of course it's one half times x, and this is the only case where you really don't do the opposite. Um, if you have one half, you want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. which you guys know you just flip the fraction. So what's the reciprocal of two, 1 half? Isn't it 2 over 1? Okay, you multiply that by 2 over 1 or 2, so x equals 6. Now the reason we do this as opposed to division, it would look like that if you did division and you got 1 half x equals 3 and you said I'm going to divide by 1 half and I'm going to divide by 1 half. That's pretty complicated. 3 divided by 1 half, all right, you're going to learn more about that maybe in algebra 2, but right now we don't want to deal with 3 divided by 1 half because what is 3 divided by 1 half? I know what 3 over 2 is, I know what 3 times 1 half is, but 3 divided by 1 half, I don't know. It's complicated, okay? So don't, that's really bad to divide by a fraction. You never divide by a fraction. I'm going to write that out here. Never divide by a fraction. Okay, never divide by a fraction. Okay, so let's try a couple of other friendly problems here. Uh, two thirds x equals um, eight. Okay, so again, you're not going to divide both sides by two thirds. You're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is three halves. So that always cancels, and we get x equals. Well, turn that into a whole number. Okay, so eight. Uh, two goes into Two once, two goes to eight four times. So you get ones on the bottom, x equals 12 over 1 or 12. Don't give me the answer of 12 over 1, it's going to be 12. Okay, let's try another one here. Um, four fifths, x equals uh, seven thirds. Okay, uh, you take the, uh, the reciprocal of that, so five fourths, just multiply that by five fourths, and nothing really cancels, but that's okay. Well, it cancels here, of course, because you're solving for x. And this is nothing cross cancels. 7 times 5 is 35. 3 times 4 is 12. You don't need to convert it into a mixed number. Improper fraction is fine. But that's your answer. 35 over 12. Okay, this isn't too bad, right? I hope not. Okay, here's another one here. Um, negative 3 fourths equals negative 2 thirds x. Okay, if you want to switch around, it makes it a little bit easier. There we go. And then multiply both sides by negative 3 halves, the reciprocal. And don't forget, you've got to have that negative in there too because you need to, when you multiply that negative times negative, it becomes positive. And, oops, I forgot my x here. And um, it has to, be, has to be a positive x equals a number. Okay? So multiply that by negative 3 halves and that by negative 3 halves. In this case here, nothing cancels. Okay, you may look like something cancels, but you got threes in the top and you got four and two in the bottom, so nothing cancels. So negative three times negative three is positive nine. Four times two is eight. So the answer is nine eighths. Alright, and if you want to check your answer, just multiply negative two thirds times nine eighths, just to check it. And that's a one and a three, and a negative one and a four. So it's negative one times three is negative. 3, 1 times 4 is 4. So negative 3 fourths, and that's what it is. These are the same, so it's correct. Okay, seems pretty reasonable. Let's try a couple more here. 
Um, negative two. Let's see. Let's do this one. Um, ten equals negative two thirds x. Okay, it looks kind of complicated, but not really. I'm going to switch around because I like to have my variable on the left hand side when I start. Then I multiply it by negative three halves. Change that into a fraction. All that cancels, and we get x equals. 10 or 2 goes into 10 5 times, 2 goes into 2 once, and so we have negative 15 is my final answer. Okay? So these are all one step uh, math problems. Um, you know, you could have, I didn't do one, you could have a decimal in here. Here, x plus 1.6 equals um, 8.2. And subtract 1.6 from both sides. Okay, and you get x equals, uh, that's 0.6 and 7.6, so x equals 6.6. Okay, that's pretty easy. Decimals, fractions, no big deal. All right, just watch your step when you're doing all this, and uh, you should be good to go. All right, that's it, math fans. You have a great day. Goodbye.